I am the co-owner of Solid Rock Soap Company. We're located here in Skytook, just up Javine Hill. We have seven acres. We run our own goat herd. The same milk that we feed our children and that we drink is the same milk that we put into our products. So I want to talk a little bit about why I started making soap and why I think it is such an essential homesteading skill that everybody should probably have. Um, even if you don't want to make it on a normal basis, it's just good solid knowledge to have. I am a 25 year master herbalist. I know I don't look, I hope I don't look quite that old. I've been told I don't look quite that old, but maybe I do. Um, <laughs> Uh, I've been studying herbs and essential oils for med as used for medicine for over 25 years. And a natural lifestyle has always been really important to my husband and I and how we raised our five children. We're the we have home births, we do all kinds of crazy stuff that people look at us like we're, you're weird. <laughs> and we are. Um, so he got me these goats when we moved out to the country. He was raised in the country. I always wanted to be raised in the country, but I didn't have that blessing in my life. So when we got to the country, he got me goats. And I fell in love with goats. Don't ask, there's just something about them. There's, there's something about a goat. Especially dairy goats. Now, I've had meat goats. Do I have any meat goat people here? More goats? Few. Have a few? Okay. I prefer my dairy goats. I, they taste great. <laughs> I'll put it, I love meat goats, they taste great, but the dairy goats are just so super affectionate, and maybe I just didn't have the right meat goats. Are your meat goats nice and sweet and lovey, or are they more are. like cattle? I mean, mine are. Okay, so I just had they the wrong, love me. I just had the wrong goats. Maybe you weren't giving them the right treat. <laughs> it, it might be. Because they really like animal cookies. animal cookies. Yeah, see, we do animal cookies. <laughs> Let's see, fruit snacks is a big deal. Oh, fruit snacks, see? That's where I missed out. Uh, we raise Nubian and La Mancha. Uh, our goats are full size. They're not the cute little mini sweet naughty goats that everybody loves. And I call them naughty because they get out so quick and easy and they climb on your cars and the top of barns. <laughs> I've never had my big goats do that, thank goodness. Um, we chose that particular mix of goats for a purpose. We wanted our milk to be the most nutritious possible. And we love the mix between the quantity that a La Mancha can throw. We have one of our dairy goats, she gives us a gallon and a half a day. That's a lot if you don't know dairy goats, that's a whole lot. <laughs> and then the Nubians, the Nubians, even though they're very loud and they yell at you a lot, they have those beautiful long ears and they have a really high butter fat content. And so for, nourishing your body and for what we do with our business it was the perfect match so fast forward I tried we looked at you know selling our milk which is highly regulated we don't we don't like pasteurized milk we're those people um, I've never drank pasteurized milk I don't like it I never gave it to my kids we drink raw milk um, and that is very highly frowned upon <laughs> in a lot of circles. So we realized, first of all, it's thousands and thousands and thousands of dollars to become a grade A dairy, which we didn't just have hiding out in our back pockets. But we wanted the most nutrients out of our milk, and so we didn't want to have to pasteurize it. So that was a no-go. So then we went to cheese. How many of you guys like goat cheese? I love goat cheese. I love it. It's really good. But like you can see in the crowd, just a few people raised their hand, and other people are like, uh, not so much. <laughs> so it's kind of a limited crowd. And if it was something that we wanted to use to help supplement our income, goat cheese really wasn't going to be it. I also, at the time, all five of my children were at home, and I was homeschooling. I don't know if you've ever made cheese. That's not a really easy task to do when you've got five kids that you're trying to teach, and the youngest is, he's just now five. <laughs> So my husband came and he said, hey, have you ever thought about making soap? And I looked at him like he had six heads and I said, no. He said, I think you need to. Okay. So it took me six months because I'm a researcher. I want to learn as much as possible before I do stuff. Um, I'm a control freak that way, I guess. And I finally told him, I said, okay, I'm ready to dive in. And he said, here you go. Get what you need. And I'm married to a Marine and most Marines don't just do that. They don't just say, here you go. 
So I knew he had my back. So I ordered $200 worth of equipment and supplies. That was it. That was where we started. I made my first batch of soap at my kitchen counter right next to my sink. Put it on Facebook just for my friends and in five minutes the entire loaf of soap that I had made was sold. I looked at my husband, I said, that's a fluke. That's a fluke. He said, make another batch. I did it again and it sold in about 10 minutes the next time. I said, eh. So I did it a third time and the third time it did the same thing and I said, okay, maybe we're on to something. <laughs> and so from there we have literally just grown exponentially. And we're just, we're blessed and excited to be able to be here. Just I wanted to give you a little bit of background about who we were. So, you, you know, I'm not just some, I am strange and weird, but just that I'm not some person who doesn't really know what they're doing. <laughs> Even if I'm not. Okay. So what I'm going to teach you guys today is a skill that I think is, is really important. If things go south, I'm not a big conspiracy theorist, but if things go south, you're going to want to be able to make soap. You're going to want to be able to clean your clothes, clean your family, and clean dishes and things like that. You know, we, we never know what's going to happen. And so there's the prepper side of things, but there's also just basic homesteading. I'm assuming you guys are all here because you want to know more about a more natural lifestyle and being more self-sufficient. Am I right? Yes. Okay, cool. I'm one of those that talk back to me, ask questions. Um, that's probably the homeschool mom in me, sorry. So I'm assuming that that's why you guys are here. And so this is, I'm really hoping will be a great skill. I picked a soap that is gonna be a great, basic, quick, fast, cheap, go-to soap. Is it what I sell? No, because that's how I make my living. <laughs> Literally, it's how I make my living. But it's something that you guys can springboard from. You can start with this and you can go and milk soaps are what they consider a more advanced soap making technique because there's a lot more involved with not letting the milk scorch and there's more steps. So if you want to make soap to start with, this is a great basic recipe. The QR code up there has the recipe. There's literally three ingredients in today's soap. I use organic coconut oil distilled water, and 100% free grade lye. And you're gonna have soap. It's that simple. You don't have to spend a lot of money to make soap. There are people on YouTube that have all these fancy setups. And I will tell you, in my shop, it, di it did cost a lot of money to go full production, professional grade equipment and things like that. But to start out, you don't have to have that. I started out with a cheap Walmart immersion blender. Now we have a great big one horsepower, looks like a small outboard motor. His nickname is Evan Root. If you follow us on Facebook, I have pictures of Evan Root on there. We slap Evan Root outboard motor stickers on it because that's just our sense of humor. But you can start out with something so cheap. You can even do it without an immersion blender if you're super motivated and you have strong arms and a lot of time. <laughs> because when our great-grandmas made soap, when my great-grandma made soap, she didn't have an immersion blender. She had a spoon. She didn't, she didn't have lye that she bought at the store. They started with ash, and they made it that way. Same way they used to make hominy. How many of you guys know how they used to do that with the lye water? Not very many. <laughs> You'd be surprised. Um, so you can start out super, super simple. You don't it doesn't have to be expensive. The one thing I will tell you is please, if you want to take this on and you want to go home and try and make this, do not use the same bowls, spoons, or equipment that you have in your personal kitchen. Make, have designated supplies for your soap making. Because while once the soap cures and goes through the saponification process, it's 100% natural and perfectly gentle. Like my five-year-old has eaten soap before. That's how gentle it is. Wouldn't advise that, but apparently it looked like a cookie, so he ate it. <laughs> the lye in and of itself is a caustic material, and you don't want to get that mixed up with your food. You don't. It, it, it will literally eat the meat off of the bone. It gives you a chemical burn. So you keep your equipment separate. That's my, that's my big warning 101. So I'm going to talk a little bit about molds. 
You're going to want something to put your soap in when you make it. It can be so simple as a shoebox that you line with parchment paper. You don't have to have expensive molds. I have people who started out using old uh, juice cartons. This is a PVC pipe with an end cap in it. I will warn you, make sure your soap is fairly thick when you do this because if it's runny and you pick it up and the bottom falls out, you'll have soap all over your counter and floor. Don't ask how I know that. <laughs> From those, we moved up to this. Now, I'm cheap. I hope some of you guys are cheap too. I'm cheap. My husband built this for me in about five minutes with scrap wood he had out in the barn. It's literally just cheap wood and a couple of bolts. And he did it with these end pieces so that I could adjust the size of the soap that I made. I don't use these much anymore because we make thousands of pounds of soap at a time now. But when we started out, this was great. It worked perfect. And it didn't cost a lot of money. And I literally lined it with parchment paper. So you don't have to buy the silicone liners. We stepped up when we upgraded and we're making more. This is a silicone liner. You can purchase these from professional soaping equipment sites. You can find cheaper ones on Amazon. They aren't super durable. I always suggest go with the best quality that you can so it will last longer if this is something that you want to continue to do. If it's just something you want to try for fun, grab the shoe box and the parchment paper. Don't spend any money at all. This was the next slab mold that he made. This will make roughly 20, 25 pounds of soap, depending. And we built it around the size of the liners. And this front part actually falls off. And yes, I did have to mark it front. That's the kind of person I am. Because <laughs> if I didn't, then I would cut the loaves wrong and I would not be happy. You can start out with a basic kitchen scale. Oh, other mold. These are fun little molds. These are great for kids. Or if you just want to make some soap just to keep at your bathroom sink. You don't have to, you know, make massive bulk bars of soap. You can just do six little soaps. They're super cute. And they're easy to pop out. You can get those anywhere from six to ten dollars on Amazon. So go cheap to start. That's my big advice. Go cheap to start. This is one of our professional grade scales. We run two of these right now. We're about to get another one because we're about to expand production again, and I need one that'll weigh up to 400 pounds. This little guy won't do that. He cuts out. He cuts out pretty quick. Um, but this is a nice scale. You can use a $15 kitchen scale from Walmart. Don't ever go by volume when you're making soap. Soap is fairly simple, but it is a science. If you come across a recipe on YouTube or Google or Facebook that says use one cup of lye to four cups of water. Run. <laughs> Please run because chances are they haven't run it through a proper soap calculator to make sure that your lye water ratio is correct and it won't burn your skin later. So don't use volume. Always use weight. Weight is the way to go. I don't care if you use ounces. I don't care if you use grams. Just remember I told you that you need to use weight. <laughs> This is one of my smaller immersion blenders. This is a cordless. They have corded versions from 10 bucks to 30 bucks. One of my best workhorses that I bought was a KitchenAid. I, I killed it in three months because of the volume. But one like that, most people can make last several years of making soap that they need for their family. Lye, you want to make sure you can get lye anywhere. You can get lye at the hardware store. Just make sure that it's 100% lye. Make sure there's no additives in it. People use this as a drain cleaner. So be careful which lye you get. We only use food grade lye. So it's going to be pure. We want to make sure it's pure. Um, I probably did a no-no. I did not mark my container, but I know what it is. So. <laughs> the food grade lye, you can get it on Amazon. You can get it. I order it through a um, chemical company called Duda Diesel out of Alabama um, because I order 300 pounds of it at a time. But the smaller companies, you can find professional soap companies 
or soap making equipment companies online that will sell lye, that sell two pounds at a time. But if you're just going to give it a go, run down to Ace and tell them you need 100% lye. Red Devil lye is 100% lye. It's not food grade, but it is 100% lye, and it will make a bar soap. So just, I'm, I'm very OCD over the ingredients I use, but it doesn't always have to be the most pure, the best. I do that because I sell my products to you guys, so. Absolutely not, because once it goes through the saponification process, which is the chemical process, my husband used to make fun of me and said I made that up. He said that you just made that word up. I said, no, it's really a word. <laughs> once it goes through that, there's no lie left. But you have to have the lye to make the liquid and the oil come together to make soap. It, exactly. Exactly. So in the end product, you're not going to have any lye in there at all. You cannot have a true soap without lye. If somebody tells you, I make soap without lye, it's a lie. Sorry for the bad joke. Dad jokes abound in our house. Sorry. I usually use 100% goat milk. But today I'm going to use water because not everybody has goats in their pasture or in their backyard. So I wanted to make this accessible for you guys. So is there any difference between using the milk and the water? There's a huge difference. There's a huge difference. The milk adds so much to the process, to the vitamins, the lactic acids, the skin cell turnaround. I'm a big proponent of goat's milk. Okay, well, so what I'm asking is like the process of making it is a lot different. You need to freeze your milk. Okay, I can do that. You need to freeze the milk. Right. You need to add the lye very slowly because the milk will scorch. And if it scorches, it's going to smell awful. And the lye will actually begin to saponify the fats in the milk. And you're going to have to throw it out. So when I work at home, I have a big bowl. I, I hear you guys. I will get to you. I, um, I have a big metal stainless steel bowl that I have ice in. I set my lye bowl in that. I have frozen milk, and then I add the lye very, very slowly. I try and keep my lye temperature down as low as I can possibly get it. And then that, that will help with all of that. I have, there's a video floating around um, the hub of SkyTube. You guys can find that on YouTube, and you can also find it on uh, Facebook. He came out, and I walked him through how I actually make soap with the milk. So you can see a video. He, kind of, he was a hoot. <laughs> He was a city boy, and I taught him to milk a goat, and he was, he was really concerned about that. Okay, so what's, what's, the, what's the big benefit or difference between goat milk and sheep milk? As far as the difference between the goat's milk and the sheep's milk, honestly, there's not a ton of difference. Obviously, some of the lactic acids are going to be slightly different. The makeups and the fatty acid chains, you know, things like that are going to be a little bit different. We could go really chemically based, and I could nerd out on you here for a minute. Um, the milk, the reason I chose goat over sheep is because goat's milk is the most like human skin pH that you'll find. And that's one of the reasons why it helps so much with sensitive skin, skin issues like psoriasis and eczema. Um, it's why a lot of people who are lactose intolerant can drink goat milk when they can't drink cow's milk. And the same with sheep milk. So they're very similar, but there's some, there's some tweaks. But you could absolutely do sheep's milk soap. There's people that use donkey milk in soap. I could not imagine milking a donkey, but they do it. <laughs> so what about dehydrated goat's milk? Why are people using that? They use dehydrated goat's milk, number one, because the goat's milk craze, it's a, it's a, it, it has become a big craze. It's cheap to a point. They don't have to have the animals, so it's easier and more accessible. Fresh milk is always better. I, I and my customers can tell a big difference between powdered milk, water-based soap, and fresh goat's milk. So the powdered milk will be the water-based? Well, we can do just straight water, which is what I'm going to do with you guys today with nothing else. You can take that water, you can add powdered goat milk to it, or you can use the full milk replacement, which is what I do. Back there. Well, that's a little tricky. So if you want to try this recipe with milk, you can do that. And it is typically a 100% swap out for the water. 
But what I would want you to do is to go online to soapcalc.com, and I want you to run it through their calculator. What that's going to do is make sure that your lye to liquid ratio is going to be correct. I don't ever want you to grab a recipe off the internet and not run it through. You can do that with this one because I run everything I do through that. And this is actually, when I make my dish soap, like you'll see my little dish soap blocks over at our booth, that's what that is. This soap will be great for dish, dishes, it's great for getting stains out of clothes, you can grind it and you can put it in laundry soap. So I wanted to do something that was kind of a multi-use. So if you want to add milk to it, great. Please just make sure you run it through that calculator. And you guys can find me on Facebook. If you try that and it is confusing and you, you're like, ugh, what have I done here? Message me. I'll be happy to walk you through SoCal. I'll be happy to help you in any way I can. Anybody else before we move on? All right. You don't have to, you can make soap with as many oils as you want or as few oils as you want. You're gonna wanna go through and you're going to want to in research the properties behind your oils. I did that with every single thing we have in our soap. There's no fillers. Every oil I make our soap out of has a purpose, has a benefit for the skin. Coconut oil is exceptionally cleansing. Most people are like, eh, it's greasy. It's actually very drying. That's why it's great in laundry products it's great on your dishes because it will cut grease. I have a lady who uses our dish soap to clean her grill. <laughs> so it cuts grease. It's great. Would I use this to bathe my body with? If it came down to it and we were out in the, the bush and I had to, yeah, I would wash with that. I would much rather have the stuff with milk in it though to wash my body because this would be very drying as a body soap but it's a great utilitarian soap. With milk, the other thing I would tell you, if anyone is interested in trying to step out and make some milk soap, I would definitely, definitely, definitely suggest you do a lot of research and try several recipes without it first. Get your feet underneath you, get comfortable, then dive into milk. Don't do what I did. I'm like, I got this. Trust me. Trust me, try some without milk first. <laughs> this is what I use now. This is what I use now. Um, on it, I make between 72 to 144 bars of soap per batch, and I make eight of those at a time. This is another silicone liner and another homemade mold. You don't have to buy the $90 molds that the professional soap companies sell you. You can literally do this with a handsaw and some nails, guys. It doesn't have to cost an arm and a leg. So I'm going to put the microphone down because it's time to get started. I'm going to talk real quick about um, PPE, as my husband calls it. Personal, you know, PPE, yeah, personal protective equipment. <laughs> You're going to want to wear some kind of eye protection. Trust me. Trust me, trust me. I have flipped lie in my eye before and it was it was a miracle that I did not wind up blind because it will blind you. Please don't make that mistake. Wear protective. And your regular glasses that you wear, those are not protective glasses. These have got gaskets in them. So you want to be super careful. I don't want anybody here to be afraid of lie, but I want you to be wise because it can hurt you. Um, I'm not wearing long sleeves. I've never worn long sleeves to make soap. But I've also gotten lie burns a lot. <laughs> so if you want to avoid those, wear a long sleeve t-shirt. I have an apron on because I have to, I have to go mend my booth early, <laughs> later on. So this is what we actually work in. That's why it's all dirty and not clean. Sorry, guys. I grabbed it off the hook in the shop before he got here. Dollar Tree is a great place for bowls and spoons and other equipment to make soap. Do it cheap, guys. Don't think you have to go out and buy the most expensive stuff. Trust me, this is a dollar store spatula and I have about 30 of these bad boys and I can never find one when I need one. <laughs> You're gonna wanna wear gloves. Um, I just get them, these, these actually came from Locke. My husband's a heating and air guy, so these came from Locke. But you can get them at Walmart. 
I don't suggest big baggy ones. Get ones that fit your hands because when you're working with lye and molds and if you want to get fancy, you'll see a lot of our soaps have got colorants and clays and fun stuff on them. You're going to want to be able to feel what you're doing. You don't want these like trash bags on your hands. Make sure you can actually you know, move around and feel stuff. Protect your clothes. Uh, you're not going to want to get colorant fragrance oils. You're not going to want to be like me and come in the shop and look like I've had a wrestling match with the soap. <laughs> Stay clean, you know. Do as I say, not as I do. <laughs> you can do this on a hot plate. It's quicker and easier for me to use a microwave today. We actually, um, we do, we do um, tours of our shops. If you guys ever come out and want to visit, Give us a message and we'd love to have you out. I actually have a 20 gallon oil tank that keeps all of my oils and butters hot. I don't even use the microwave for that. <laughs> but when I started out, that was what I did because it was quick and easy. So I'm gonna suit up and we're gonna make some soap. Do you guys have any questions before we get started? Do you do classes at your shop? Typically, no, I don't, but we will be doing something here very soon called a date to create. And what that's gonna be is we will have one to two um, couples or small groups that will be able to come out will kind of do a presentation like this where it's more one-on-one. -on -one. You can ask all kinds of questions. You get to see the shop. You get to see the goats. You get to see the farm. Um, and then you actually get to create your own soap. And that's part of the experience. And you get to come back if you'd like and cut that because you have to cut it the next day. Or I can cut it for you. And then as soon as it cures, which our soaps take four to six weeks to cure, we don't just make it three days later, package it and sell it to you. It literally sits four to six weeks in, in cabinets to cure or racks now. We have racks in our shop, which is really nice. Um, and then you can come back and get that. And you have your own custom bar soap, you know, loaf of soap that you've made, which will be really fun. We also do homeschool or school groups. We have one coming on April 9th. They'll get to come and feed baby goats, and the kids will get to leave with uh, a product we call soap dough. And it's soap, but you can mold it like clay, and they can mold whatever they want out of it and let it sit 24 hours, and then they have their own little bar soap that they've made. So they'll get to take something with them when they go. How much and, do you charge for homeschoolers to come out? Um, at this point, it's free. Okay. We will um, in the future, if, if they want to do the soap dough, it's $5 a student, and that covers just my basic cost. I just do the tours for free because I want people to be able to learn and enjoy and come out and see all that there is to see out there on the farm, and they don't maybe have access to that on a normal basis. What a great FFA project you present. Absolutely. It's great for FFA. Yes, sir. We're here in Skytube. We live just up on Javine Hill. We're literally like two minutes from downtown Skytube, so we're easy, easy to find. All right, well, if you guys are ready, we're going to start making some soap. I'm going to try and yell. I, I have four boys, so I ought to be pretty good at this. So we'll see. I've already got the coconut oil pre-measured. You'll find when you make Soap, you can go to Big Lots and get coconut oil. There's nothing super fancy about it. You just want to make sure it's pure coconut oil. There's nothing else in it. Never realized they put other stuff in coconut oil until I started making soap, and I had batches mess up, and I couldn't figure out why, and then I went and read the ingredients. We will see if this is actually plugged in and working. We may need shame. We'll see. It's plugged in, but we'll see if it's working. This is just a regular microwave. You just want to make sure you can fit it in there. Hey, it's going. Woo! <laughs> I couldn't see the numbers on the screen, so I was kind of like, oh, is it working? It's kind of sketchy. So while it does that, one of the things that you want to do is you're going to want to, especially if you're just using water, do your lye water ahead of time. But please, whatever you do, make sure your containers are marked and it's not where children or pets can get to it. If they drink it, they will die. It's not a, oh, they might have an injury. It will kill them. So please be very careful. 
my husband had an uncle that got under the sink and, and ate lye and died. So please, we're very, 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 very paranoid about the lie. That's one reason why we're glad we have a shop. Now. I would soap at night when the kids were in bed. I had a lot of late nights. <laughs> so I have to turn this around so I can see it. But on your recipe, you can't see it here, but you're going to have your oil quantity. Everything's in ounces. You don't have to worry about, it's going to show you the cost, and that's based on just random coconut oil that you can purchase anywhere. This is the program I use. I use a professional soaping program, so it does all that for me. Um, your NaOH is the uh, chemical compound abbreviation for sodium hydroxide. Do not get potassium hydroxide. I've done that. If you don't want to make liquid soap, don't get potassium hydroxide. <laughs> your soap will never set up. <laughs> Again, I speak from experience. <laughs> Your water, one of the things I want to make sure I tell you about your water, don't just use tap water, don't use nursery water because they have minerals added into that. It will mess up your soap. It will not set up right, it will crumble, it will react weird with the lye. You want distilled water. If you're using milk, you don't have to worry about that. But you want distilled water if you're just using a water. So I'm going to go ahead, tear this out, and I don't have to have my safety glasses on yet, it's just water. And our recipe calls, mine does, yours is a little bit smaller because I didn't figure anybody would want to make an 18 bar batch. I'm actually going to use the soap I make today. so. You want to be very precise with your measurements. If you go over, don't just go, eh, it's no big deal. Because then your soap's going to flop, and you're going to be frustrated, and you're going to want to know why. So make sure when you measure, everything is exact. On your water, if your measurements are weird on your scale, like it needs to round up or round down to be even for you, Always round up on your water and down on your lye. Lye heavy soap is not usable. It will burn your skin. So you always want to round down on lye and up on water. And if you go to making soap and you can't remember that, message me and I'll, I'll help you remember. All right. All right, my lie is already measured out in this. I'm going to tell you another thing that's really important to remember. Don't ever pour your water into your lie. It will volcano and you will get hurt. You always want to go lie into the water. Water, they, all soap makers have this, this rather scary, fun little rhyme. Water into lye, you'll die. Don't put the water into the lye. Put the lye into the water. It's not a very happy rhyme. Oh, hello. See, you can tell. Do as I say, not as I, ew, boy, I can use these. <laughs> You're going to see this begin to steam. It's going to get screaming hot. It will get upwards of 300 degrees. It's cloudy at first. We're going to see if I can stir this without getting it all over the sink. You just want to stir it until your lye is completely dissolved. For those who do FFA, FFH, homeschoolers, this is a great chemistry lesson on exothermic reactions. Literally, I, that's really hot. Like, I can't put my hands on it right now. It's like burning. <laughs> that's why most soap makers, if they use just straight water, they'll go ahead and mix up their lye water way ahead of time. 
I don't have that luxury here today as I teach you because I wanted to do it all live so you could see me do it. So. The best thing to mix your lye water in is not glass, I'm sorry. I walked off and forgot my container that I mixed my lye in and Shane rescued me with a mason jar. This is okay, but lye over time will etch, will etch glass. And the last thing you wanna do is when you're making soap, have it just finally reach its limit and lye go everywhere. If that ever does happen, and you get it on your skin, rinse it with as much cold water as quickly as possible. Please don't put vinegar on your skin when you get a lye burn. It intensifies the chemical reaction and will burn you even worse. It's great to neutralize lye on surfaces. So if you get lye on a surface and you need to clean it up, grab some vinegar on a rag and wipe it up and it'll be fine. But that's not what you wanna put on your skin, just cold water. Again, I speak from experience. What type of container do you normally use? Metal? I normally use stainless steel. With soap, you want to use stainless steel. Don't use aluminum. It will cause a chemical reaction, and it will let off caustic fumes. Make sure you mix your lye in a well-ventilated area. If you're using frozen milk, the fumes, it doesn't happen. It doesn't get that hot. Like right now, this is probably, I didn't bring my thermometer, but this thing's probably around 295 to 300 degrees. Not a thing, because it's, it's heat safe and it's lye safe. Now I just got that dripping down my finger and it, it's a little hot, but other than that, had that been my actual finger, I would have wanted to get that off of there pretty quick because it would start burning my skin. Number five plastic is also another great container that you can make your lye water or your soap in. The buckets, the little measuring buckets with handles at the Dollar Tree, are a great place to start. Those are great. You can also get the paint, little pint paint containers from Lowe's. As long as this is number five on the bottom of it, you're good. You're gonna see this start to change from cloudy to clear as it finishes dissolving. There's different types of coconut oil. There are some that melt at 76 degrees. There's some that melt on contact. And then I'm a little more stubborn. I like my bars and soap super hard, so I use 92 degree. So my coconut oil actually melts at 92 degrees. You want it completely melted before you start your soap. Really, once you get all of this together and you get comfortable, it's pretty anticlimactic. <laughs> it's pretty basic. And you'll get really used to it. Just don't ever get comfortable with the lie. Always be super careful with that. Don't ever eat or drink around your lie or, or even the raw soap. It takes three days for soap to go through the completed saponification process. So even the next day when you cut it, wear gloves. Don't eat or drink around it. It's just for your own safety precautions. You just really want to be safe. We have a separate area in our shop where if the girls want to have a drink, they can keep it way over there and they stay way away from where we actually make the soap. So we're just waiting on our. Want that to be at least cool enough for me to touch. So I'll get this out of the way. Do you guys have any questions while we wait for the coconut oil to do its thing? A lot of times in soap making, that's what it is. It's just kind of a waiting game. In my shop, it takes all day if I let it cool down on its own. If I pop it in the freezer, it'll take about 30 minutes. Just don't forget it in the freezer. <laughs> I've done that before, too. <laughs> you were saying you let your soap sit for four to six weeks. Yes, ma'am. Should this be sat that long as well? Yes, this will sit this long as well. All soap needs, at le true soap with lye, needs at least four weeks because a lot more happens than just the water evaporating out of your soap. There's actually a chemical process that continues through those four to six weeks that contributes to the crystalline structure in the soap. It won't completely finish until the fourth week. A lot of soap makers, and in the beginning I did this as well, 
I would weigh my soap each week to see when the water loss stopped. After that water loss stops, it's fully cured. So that's why I say some of my soaps take six weeks, like our avocado chamomile that I make. I use a chamomile extract. I use organic avocados and I puree them right before I put them in the soap. So there's a lot of extra water and fats in that. And so it takes longer to cure than this. This will cure in about four weeks. If you want to make a true Castile soap, that's a, a, a hot buzzword that you'll hear in the soaping community. Oh, I only use Castile soap. If it has anything other than olive oil in it, it's a lie. <laughs> Don't buy it. <laughs> if it has anything other than olive oil, it's a Bastille soap. We make Bastille soap. We don't make Castile soap because Castile soap takes 9 to 12 months to cure. And I'm impatient. <laughs> I don't want to wait that long for a soap. It's a wonderful soap. It is very luxurious. That's why Castile soap is typically more expensive. So the Dr. Bonners that you see in Whole Foods that says, oh, it's a Castile soap. It's not. It has more than, than olive oil in it. So and just be aware of what's on your labels. All right. You're going to want to get a thermometer. I've done this enough that I didn't bring a thermometer. I also forgot it, but most of the time I don't. Most of the time I don't use my thermometer when I sew. When I make lotion or our skin care, that's a whole nother ball game. I use a pH meter, I use my thermometer, I pull out all the chemical equipment that I've got when I do those. But I've worked enough with the soap that I can tell you that this is probably close to 200 degrees. And this is still about 295. If I had my infrared thermometer, I could measure it for you. We could, you know, it's like when you cook. How many of you guys measure when you cook? I just, my grandma taught me, this is a tablespoonful. And I always mess with my kids because I'll put it in a tablespoon and it's right. And my, my littlest one's like, how do you do that, mommy? It's magic. I'm like, no, it's not. <laughs> so after you do something enough, you kind of get used to the temperatures, how it feels, and you know how to work with it. In the beginning, there's nothing wrong with taking the temperatures of your oil in your life. If you're making something other than this, just make sure that your lye and oil temperatures are within 10 to 15 degrees of each other. Otherwise, something like this, these are probably about 75, 80 degrees apart. It's not going to make that big a deal. All right, you guys ready for the magic? <laughs> I know we've built up to this moment, and I'm afraid you're going to see how easy it is and go, oh. It's, but really, it's pretty cool. All right, so I'm going to take the lye, and you're going to pour your lye. Woo, it's hot. In there. And you're going to use, I use an immersion blender. Again, you don't have to. I don't know if you guys can see it starting to go from a clear to a white. With an immersion blender, I can do this in about two minutes max. A lot of times it'll be a lot less than that. There's different stages of what they call trace as you make soap. This is a great recipe. I have lots of time to work. Um, you want to get to an emulsion. If any of you guys are cooks, I'm going to take this off so I can actually look at you because these are really smudgy. Um, an emulsion is when you make salad dressing. Oil, water, or oil, vinegar, and then typically a mustard of some kind to help it emulse, emulsify. So you'll use your immersion blender and get to that where it won't separate anymore. That's your first stage. A light trace, and you'll hear that terminology a lot in soap making, is when you can pick up your stick blender and run it across the top of your soap and you'll see a light stream that absorbs quickly back into the soap batter. A medium trace, it stays a little longer and it's more observable. And a thick trace looks like thick pudding. I typically don't ever work in thick trace because of the designs that I do on purpose. Sometimes the essential oil that you put in your soap will cause your batter to do what they call accelerate, which means it gets thick and it gets thick really quick. And if you don't get it in the mold, you can have soap on a stick. And it sticks right on your immersion blender, and you don't know what to do with it. 
and you run around like a crazy person going, ah, get it off. So there's so much fun with soap making. It's a lot of fun. As you can see, this is starting to get thicker. And it, once you start the chemical process with the lye, it'll thicken on its own. You really, all you need is a little bit of patience. I have a stick blender because I'm not patient. <laughs> This is literally ready for me to go ahead and pour. My shaft on my stick blender, make sure you get stainless steel. Everything needs to be stainless steel. The bell is important because you don't want a lot of air into your soap batter. You don't want bubbles. So that's why I chose that particular kind. I don't know if you guys can see, it went from clear to now it's kind of white, like a milky white. And that's because literally the only oil in it is that coconut oil. It'll take on the color of the oils or essential oils you use. We have an orange oat soap. The only color is the color from the tenfold orange essential oil that we use. And it is a beautiful yellow like your sweater. It's just gorgeous. This is actually okay to pour. I could wait and make it thicker, but it's actually getting pretty thick. The hotter it gets and the longer it sits, the thicker it's gonna get. And I don't know if you guys can see, kind of try, I don't know. I can't get it to where the camera will see it. But you can kind of see it leaves a little bit of a trace on the top. It's kind of like a melted milkshake at this point. So we're good to go ahead and pour. And literally guys, we just made soap. It's that simple. I let my, much to the chagrin of my boys who do my soap dishes, <laughs> um, <laughs> I pay them, I pay them. Don't, don't give me the sad look, oh I'm so mean, I pay them to do this. Um, wait 24 hours. I scrape out, I don't want to waste any of the soap, so I always scrape my dishes as much as possible, but I let them go through the first 24 hours. First of all, because we're on a septic system and you don't want a lot of oils down your sink. And at this point, it's not soap yet. It's still going through that chemical process. So you still have lye and oil in here. That's what you've got. So you're gonna wanna wait 24 hours and then wash with hot water and soap and you're good to go. We've been where we're currently at for seven years and I've been making soap hot and heavy for seven years and we've never had a septic problem. So. Be sure you wait, and then you can wash it. And the great thing is, is once you wait that 24 hours, you don't have to add a lot of additional soap because you've already got soap. <laughs> at what point in the process do you add scent and color? As soon as I get it blended to the point that I want it, and there's a fine balance because there's some uh, essential oil blends that I set our soaps with that I have to get at a much lighter trace, almost emulsion because I know it will kick that acceleration process up. So it all depends on what I'm using. A good lavender, I can mix it until it was at the trace that this one was at, and then I can pour my measured uh, lavender oil in there, and then I can add. I love to use clays, spirulina is great. If you wanna stay as natural as possible, you can go uncolored. You can do micas, they have naturally formed micas that you can get that are responsibly and sustainably sourced. And you can do all of that right after you get the lye and the oils at the stage that you want it. And then you can go ahead and mix it in. Absolutely. Absolutely. When you do that, if you have multiple colors, you'll see some of our soaps are really vibrant and have lots of colors. Start with the lightest color and mix to the darkest. And then that way you don't have to rinse your blender between each color. This soap, I will be ready to cut this by tonight. Most soap takes 18 to 24 hours. The 100% coconut oil soap, it saponifies a lot quicker because it's a hard oil. This gets super hard. Like I can drop our soap dish soap and I'll hurt my foot before I'll hurt the soap. And it lasts forever. Is this soap like sudsy or not so much? It is exceptionally sudsy. It is really sudsy and I just wiped my lip and I have a lie on my finger. See, do as I say, not as I do. <laughs> I'm gonna go ahead and take these gloves off because I keep touching my face. What about, what are you cutting them with? 
I've heard all kinds of stories about dental floss and fishing line. Okay, don't use dental floss and fishing line. You'll cut your finger off <laughs> because it takes so much pressure. You can use a great non-serrated flat butcher knife. That's where a lot of people start. If you're not worried about uniformity of bars and you're not going to sell this or do anything special like that, just cut it with a knife. If you want something a little fancier, you can get a little $10 cheese cutter with a little wire off of Amazon. I did that for a while. Now I have a big industrial cutter that cuts 18 bars at once, which is really nice. And it uses guitar strings of all things, but they use the non-wrapped, the, the solid guitar strings. So you can start out just as easy as just a kitchen knife that you've got in, in the kitchen. Yes. What I do with our blocks is I actually set it in the sink and run the water over it to get the suds in the sink. And then I just take my wash rag or a dish brush and rub it over the block and then wash as I go. It works great and lasts two to three times longer than liquid dish soap. And we still have four kiddos at home and we don't use a dishwasher. So we really run it through a rigorous test. So what, what, what gradient is it? The coconut oil itself, believe it or not, it is so cleansing that it will cut that grease. You can make it even more so that way by adding a little citric acid to it. Again, just run it into your soap calc program and add citric acid in there. And you can Google on soap groups, but about 5 to 10% is a great citric acid percentage. And then you can go from there. Powdered yeah, powdered citric acid. Yes, ma'am. You want to stay away from essential oils like clove. Um, and I, I say clove, you can use it in very small amounts. You want to stay away from your hot essential oils. Cinnamon. You need to be careful with peppermint. Peppermint is one of my best sellers, but you want to be careful. You put cinnamon essential oil in a soap and you will light somebody's world up. It will be, yes, it'll be a great son-in-law soap. They will, they will have a spicy experience and they will not like you for it. So you want to stay away from the hotter essential oils. And when you do any type of scent, essential oil or fragrance oil, make sure you know your usage rates. Again, for essential oils, EO Calc is a great essential oil calculator. You can plug in the essential oil you want to use, whether you're making lotion, soap, deodorant, liquid soap, and it will calculate the percentage rate you need for the size batch you're making. Whatever you do, don't just go say, I'm going to make lavender soap. I'm going to take one of these little one ounce bottles of Young Living and dump it in there. You're going to be really disappointed and you're going to waste a lot of money. Find a decent essential oil to start with. Don't, don't soap with the, the, the big names. Don't. <laughs> when I make lavender soap, I have a professional company. I get it from, it's 100% pure. I use 16 ounces of lavender oil at a time. What was the calc? E-O, E and then O and then calc. Lavender's probably my most expensive soap I make next to our face soap. With that, again, I would run it through the calculator just to make sure, I've done it before, so I can kind of know, that I would use, depending on the scent I want, because they give you a range, I would probably go with two to three percent in this of my total percentage. And on your recipe, if you use your QR code, you're gonna see percentages on there. And that's how you can size your batch up or down, and you don't have to make the same size that I have on here for you. So you can literally take this, plug it into soap calc with the percentages, and say you want to make a 10-bar batch. You can scale it down. You can scale it up. Just work with your percentages. Anybody else? All right. Well, I'm done. We've got soap. It's just slightly, it's almost completely set up. So thanks a lot, guys, for coming. If you need anything, you have any questions on soap making, you can find us on Facebook at Solid Rock Soap Co.
please don't hesitate to message me. We have a website, solidrocksoco.com. I am the one who runs the live chat. If it's in the middle of the night, I may be up. You never know. <laughs> you can message me there. You can call our business phone. And if you're wanting to learn a little bit more and you want to do some one-on-one -on -one classes, don't hesitate to call me. We can always set something up. Thank you guys so much. Enjoy the expo. Thank you. Thank you.